Hi, my name is Sergei Schwaber and I work as a lead developer at Aurum in Nuremberg, Germany. I have more than 13 years of experience in SharePoint development and recently I started um, a blog where I regularly write and publish my solutions, SPFix AppDev. I would be happy if you visit my website. Um, today I will uh, present uh, my SPFX web part interactive world map. I will go to uh, the ID and the highlight, highlights, what packages I use, and then show a demo um, before giving a summary. Okay, let's talk about the web part. As the name says, this is a web part that displays a world map. Now you might uh, think, wow, Sergey, that's nothing new. It's already exists by default in SharePoint. Yes, of course it is, but the default Bing Maps web part has very few configuration uh, options. The only possibility is to define a label and whether it should be displayed or not. And of course, the position or address uh, itself. Here you can see the uh, standard web part looks like. So everyone understand what I mean. Uh, my web part has the following features. Place as many markers as you want. Show marker tooltip on hover. Configure pin color, icon color, and icon. Handle the click events. Um, cluster the markers, change the look and feel of the map style layer, define marker categories, and uh, show the, uh, the legend for the categories. Make uh, the map uh, aesthetic, uh, define the start location, page load, configure map zoom settings, and so on. This is um, how it looks like. Before I show the web part, I would like to briefly describe the techniques I used. The web part was developed with SPFX 1.14. I used Fluent UI components for the map itself, OpenStreetMap, and the well-known uh, Leaflet.js uh, uh, library. For Leaflet, um, there is a React uh, package, and um, also I used the uh, Leaflet plugin marker cluster uh, and the React Leaflet marker cluster package and then PMP controls and uh, property controls. All markers are stored directly on the web part and not in a list or something similar. For the whole web part, I invented about um, 24 hours. In the code itself, there is nothing really interesting or cool or special to, to show because in my opinion, it's a normal web part. Therefore, um, we come directly to the demo. On this page, you can see my pre-configured web part. I have simply mapped a, a few Microsoft locations, um, one for each continent. Here you can already see how the cluster looks like, this one or that one. For example, if you click on this cluster, you will be taken directly to the, this location. Now you see two markers. One shows the headquarter and the other one, uh, another Microsoft location. Here you can see that the um, icon differ. While the headquarters um, icon is custom configured, the other one uses a category. The ad advantage of categories is that they only need to be configured once and then they can be reused. If the category is customized, all markers that uh, use this category are automatically updated. In addition, um, the category can be used to display the legend, like that. Um, the marker, in this case, um, is uh, set up to, to open a dialog this, uh, that displays a um, um, SharePoint page. This is an embedded um, iframe. The dialog or the page behind it also uses this web part. Here you could write, for example, more information about the uh, uh, location. The map should be used more as a header in this case. That's why I configured it that the map is static. That means I can neither zoom in nor move. So it's nothing happens if I zoom or, or uh, uh, drag and drop. Uh, although all buttons like search, zoom or legend are hidden. The header has become very large here, I know. So let's look at the uh, marker for Ge um, Microsoft Germany. Here also the page is opened in a dialog. Um, as you can see, the map of the uh, or the header is a bit smaller here. Um, here I have additionally configured the marker as a panel. If I click on the marker, a panel is shown. The content of the panel is configurable. Of course, this is only one of many possibilities that can be mapped uh, um, with the web part. Others could be, for example, marking all customers on a map plan the next team event and show the meeting points, including the information about it, and so on. Now let's see 
the what configuration options are available. For this, I place a new web part on a new page. Um, the web part is called interactive map. And the web part can also be placed in a full width zone. By default, if I uh, create a new web part, London is uh, visible because London has latitude zero. This is leaflet specific. If you want to set the, the location somewhere else when loading the page, you can easily define this. To do this, we go to the location we want and right click on the map. For example, let's say we want uh, this, this view. Then we click right click and say make this view a start position. The position, that means uh, latitude and longitude, and the zoom level will be saved. As you um, uh, may have seen, you can also create a new marker by uh, clicking, uh, clicking right click. Let's try. The configuration of the marker is simple. You can either ch uh, choose a category or define each marker individually. You can define what should happen when the marker is clicked, if a panel, a dialog, or a URL um, um, should, should be uh, opened, or if uh, nothing should be happen at all. That one. You can choose the pin color, the icon, and the icon color. Here's a preview. Additionally, you can define a tooltip text. This will be displayed when hovering over the marker. And depending on which type you have selected, you can also define the dialog and the panel content. Panel header, panel content, is this is a PMP um, rich text control, and same for dialog. <coughs> for the URL, you can also define how the link should be opened. Um, in the same window, new window, or embedded as an iframe. Um, if you have selected a category, then fewer options are available because the category specifies the pin color, icon, icon color, and tooltip. It looks like that. So for now, I don't have any uh, categories, but we will create one, get one, and um, leave it as it is. Now I use this um, as category, and as you can see, I have no uh, other um, options to, to define the color or an icon and so on. So, as already mentioned, all markers that use the category are then automatically adjusted when you change something in the category. I would like to show this briefly. I simply create more markers and select the same category. Doesn't matter where. Let's say here, okay, and here, okay. And now um, all markers are, are black. I want to change that. Let's say we use red for now. I save that, and as you can see here, all um, the markers uh, um, have changed the color, uh, the background color of the of the pin. Okay. Now, how can I delete or move uh, um, a marker? Just click on an existing marker, for example, this one. Um, and now uh, two new buttons are available: delete and change position. The delete button deletes the marker and uh, change position over some, another way of moving it. Um, I, sh I will show you that quickly. Change position, you can now uh, move per drag and drop wherever you want. When you have the, the right position, you can uh, save it. Or, for example, you can, um, if you uh, plan to, to cancel the same, it will be moved back to the, to, to the initial position. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the web part settings. First, you can define how far you can zoom in or out. You can also define the height of the uh, uh, map. Um, enable dragging um, in map uh, allows the user to move the map to another position. Or in other words, if the pos option is disabled, the map is static like in my header headquarter example and the header uh, page header example. Finally, you can determine if the tooltip should be displayed or not. Now let's move um, on the next category. High layers. This is actually a very cool feature because it allows you to customize the map layer. There are many free layers, but um, also paid ones. So if you have a map box, map tiler, or whatever provider already, you, you could use them here. 
as I put a link here with some layers. Um, here I have uh, just an example of um, uh, layers. Let's choose one, for example, open uh, to home app. So, and then we need to um, copy this URL and insert it here. And as you can, can see here, it's changed. Uh, you need to do the same for the at attribution. Um, okay, and that's it. It's cool, isn't it? The next setting category I have called plugins and controls. Here you can, for example, activate or deactivate the marker cluster. Or hide the zoom control. Now it's here and um, not visible the zoom control. And um, additional, the search box. The search box is using uh, the OpenStreetMap API to search for addresses. Let's say um, Washington. And here it will be take the, you there immediately. Um, the last setting option is about the categories. You can manage the categories here as well. The dialog is the same um, as for the markers. Expect you can additionally show and hide the legend. Okay, um, that's it uh, with the settings and basically else with the web part. A quick summary. I think you can see that the web part has a lot of configuration options. It is available in PMP samples and also my own uh, GitHub repository. It's very dynamic and flexible. I hope you like it and have fun with it. It's um, also available for Teams uh, uh, tabs. Here are the links for repositories and uh, my blog article uh, about the web part. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a fantastic sample. Sergey, I wanted to say, you know, I, I, I really like how you've actually used a lot of the PMP controls to make the web part look and feel like it's just an out-of-the-box SharePoint web part. It looked fantastic. So thank you again. Thank you.